The first concept is, oh, let's just get the cholesterol or the, the LDL cholesterol specifically down to normal and maybe lower the triglycerides, try to get the HDL up, and that's going to translate into reduction in a cardiovascular disease or event. But that could be an assumption. Just because you alter the LDL cholesterol or you change the triglycerides or the HDL and you're using that as your framework for success and you're looking only at one piece of the puzzle, you can miss the opportunity to have really an optimal effect on what improving lipids and what the lipids do to the cardiovascular system. For example, LDL cholesterol is not simply LDL cholesterol. There's at least five different forms of LDL cholesterol, some of which have absolutely no relationship to coronary heart disease. Others have a direct effect. Secondly, HDL cholesterol, there's at least five different forms of HDL cholesterol, some of which are protective, some of which are neutral or not protective, and other forms can actually be proatherogenic and increase the risk for coronary heart disease. Triglycerides, which is measured through VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, is also different in sizes. Big ones, the big fat VLDL, are very atherogenic and they also cause thrombosis. Whereas the smaller ones are not as likely to cause cardiovascular problems.